Visualization is the key to get the quick solution. It's no wonder it applies to machine learning as well. Because what better way to represent the data other than pictures? So I can say as if you master the visualization, you will have the ability to track and experiment with all the parameters of the model so that you can get the best out of your model. So in today's video, let's explore the TensorBoard, which is a visualization toolkit of TensorFlow. And as always, I'll start by importing the TensorFlow 2.x for my session. So this will load the TensorFlow 2.x. Now, to be able to use the TensorBoard, we have to first load the TensorBoard extension. And for that, I'll make use of the magic command like this. Okay, this has been completed. So I'll now import the required libraries. For that, it is like import TensorFlow as TF and then import date time. As you can observe here, I'm also loading the date time library. So as we will be using it the later part of this video. Okay, now as the next step, I'll load the dataset for our working and this time I'll make use of MNIST dataset under tf.keras.datasets. So guys, I'll write as MNIST is equal to tf.keras.datasets.mnist and then I'll load the train and test data as x train comma y train x test comma y test is equal to MNIST.load data. Since the input features are between 0 to 255, I'll just normalize it by dividing by 255. So, x train comma x test is equal to x train divided by 255.0 and then x test is divided by 255.0. I'll now execute the code here. Okay, this has loaded the data set for our working. And as a next step, I'll create a new sequential model with a single dropout layer as model is equal to tf.keras.models.sequential tf.keras.layers.flatten off input shape is equal to 28, 28 and then tf.keras.layers.dense off 512, activation is equal to ReLU and then tf.keras.layers.dropout off 0.2 and tf.keras.layers.dense off 10, activation is equal to softmax. To explain the code which I have written here, that is, I am creating the model as sequential. In the first layer, I have created a flatten layer which will take the input images of shape 28,28 and convert into a single long vector. In the second layer, I have created a dense layer with 512 neurons and the activation function as ReLU. And it is followed by a dropout layer with the dropout rate as 0.2 and on the final output layer, I have created a dense layer with 10 neurons with the softmax activation functions. And we are having 10 neurons in the output because we are trying to classify the output to one of the 10 classes. Okay, let's confirm it by displaying the summary. So, model.summary. Now, I'll call the compile method on our model. So, it will be like Model.compile of optimizer is equal to undergrad, loss is equal to sparse categorical cross entropy, and metrics is equal to accuracy. Now, the next task will be like performing the fit on our data. And here, before performing the fit, to be able to visualize the training data with TensorBoard, we have to enable it with the use of tf.keras.callback.tensorboard. So with this, we will be able to save the logs which we can further use to create the visualization. So what I'll do is, before calling the fit on our data, I'll just specify the path and folder name in which it should be saved. So I'll write it like this. So what this will do is, this will place the logs in a timestamped subdirectory which we can use to access at a later time. And now I'll configure the tensorboard callback as tensorboard callback is equal to tf.keras.callbacks.tensorboard and inside the parenthesis I'll specify the folder where it should be saved. 
that is log directory is equal to path and histogram frequency is equal to 1. This means I want the histogram computation for every epoch. Okay, I'll now include this tensor board callback inside the fit method like this. See, model lot fit of x is equal to x train, y is equal to y train, and epochs is equal to 20. And also, we have got the validation data is equal to x test, comma, y test, and callbacks is equal to tensor board underscore callback. And I'll now execute the code. Okay, this has been executed. Now, let's check whether the logs has been created or not. And since I'm using a Google Colab, I'll just expand it here and click on Files. Yes, now here, as we can see, we have a new folder as Logs. And inside it, we have a folder as Fit. And under it, we have a timestamp directory just like we specified. And under that, we have Train and Validation folders where Logs will be saved. And with the use of these logs, let's create the visualization with TensorBoard interface. Now, to access the TensorBoard interface, we have to make use of magic command like this. That means, we call the magic command along with the path where we have saved the logs. Okay, I'll now execute the cell here. Yes, we now have the TensorBoard interface displayed for us. And as we can see on the graph, it is very interactive. We can zoom in on any required epoch to get the complete information about each run. And as we can see, we have a separate graphs for accuracy and loss. And in our case, both training and validation accuracy are increasing simultaneously. So I can say as we have performed the fit in the best way. And now not just this. What I'll do is I'll now click on graphs. So with this graphs dashboard, we can examine the TensorFlow model with very ease. As you can see here, we also have the representation as how we have created our model in TensorFlow. As we have got flatten layer, input layer, dense layer, dropout layer, as well as output layer. And finally, we have the accuracy and loss computed on final output layer. So guys, I hope you now have learned as how we can create visualizations using TensorBoard interface. So do check the link in description for the complete source code. And I look forward to see you in the next tutorial. See ya.